So I, I would like to thank Dana and Kevin for assigning me this talk because I think it's probably the easiest one I've ever been assigned because I think the answer is no, and I'd be happy to take any questions. That's pretty much all I've got. Um, so I, I, these are my disclosures, uh, none of which are actually pertinent uh, to this talk as most of these uh, involve hernia. Um, so as we've spoken and as you've heard from the last several speakers, so the demographics of GERD, it's a, it's a very prevalent disease in the general U.S. population. So about one-fifth to a quarter of Americans suffer from GERD symptoms on a weekly basis. Uh, and for the overwhelming majority of them, as you all well know, PPIs are the mainstay of therapy. And then traditional surgical procedures have really excellent outcomes in our traditional patients, meaning non-obese patients, with curative rates of 85 to 93 percent in large case series. But GERD in obese patients is, I think, a little bit of a different animal. And in fact, when you look at esophageal abnormalities in morbidly obese patients, you find that the symptoms of GERD are present in a far larger group of that population than they are in non-obese patients. Uh, so about 51% of patients with obesity and GERD suffer from heartburn. About almost 30% of them have regurgitation. Uh, and there's a significantly higher rate of endoscopic findings of GERD in that patient population as well, with about 12.5% of them suffering from hiatal hernias and 17% having reflux esophagitis. And I think Dino showed the, the similar study too, but if you pH test all of these patients, about 54% of them will have abnormal pH monitoring. So it's uh, GERD symptoms and the actual presence of the disease is far more prevalent in obese patients than in non-obese patients. And if we're going to compare whether or not we should be doing traditional anti-reflux surgery, I think we should be looking at how well we resolve GERD in our bariatric surgical patients. So this is a nice study that looked at 4,832 patients who underwent sleeve is, and compared them to about 33,000 pa 33, patients who underwent bypass. Uh, Pre-existing GERD rates were, were very similar between the two groups. About 44% of patients with sleeve had uh, pre-existing GERD compared to about half of the bypass patients. But you see that there was a significant difference in GERD resolution following these two operations with only about 16 percent of sleeve patients resolving their GERD symptoms compared to 63 percent in gastric bypass. And so the authors felt that appropriately gastric bypass should likely be the procedure of choice in morbidly obese patients suffering from gastroesophageal reflux disease. But as we all know, there are many barriers to bariatric surgery. Uh, there are many patient misconceptions. There's provider misconceptions. Uh, in my neck of the woods, there is horrendous insurance coverage. Uh, there's still, I think, a social stigma attached to bariatric surgery. And, and for many patients, there's just an unwillingness to undergo these procedures or conform to the necessary lifestyle changes. And so what do we do for patients where bariatric surgery isn't an option for one of these variety of reasons? So uh, right out of the bat, you'll see that there is great consensus about how fund applications work in obese patients. Uh, the top study uh, comes from uh, David Ratner. Uh, showed about 224 patients who underwent anti-reflux surgery with a mean follow-up of about 37 months. Uh, and he found that symptomatic recurrence was significantly higher in obese patients. About 31% had significant recurrence during the follow-up period compared to 8% for overweight patients and 4.5% for normal weight patients. Nat Soper published his, uh, his data from when he was still at Wash U and said that actually he felt that obesity did not really affect the outcomes of laparoscopic anti-reflux surgery. And he looked at 505 patients with a mean follow-up of about 35 months and found no differences in GERD metrics between patients, uh, uh, um, sorry, pre to post-op, um, and found that anatomic failure rates were similar between normal weight, overweight, and obese patients. Um, so a little bit of conflicting uh, data right out of the bat. And then there have been several publications to follow that basically fall into these two groups. There are some that support doing fund applications and anti-reflux surgery in obese patients and say it, it works with equivalent results to non-obese, and then several others that say exactly the opposite. Interestingly, uh, when you look at why it fails in obese patients, it fails, I think, for two reasons. Um, so this was a nice study that looked at 124 patients who underwent reoperative intervention for a failed fund application and then broke them down by BMI level. So less than 30, uh, which I guess they considered normal weight, even though that's still somewhat overweight, um, class 1 obesity, and then class 2 or greater. And when they look down here at the number of disrupted Nissens, you can see that that number goes up significantly from the uh, slightly overweight to very overweight to obese. Went up to about 41.7%. They also found a significant increase in the recurrence rate of hiatal hernias, 
pretty much in both of the two obese groups. So 92% uh, um, in the BMI 30 to 35 and 83% in the greater than 35. So it failed for a variety of reasons, but clearly failed at a higher rate than it did compared to non-obese patients. When looking at studies that directly compare bariatric surgery to traditional anti-reflux surgery for uh, GERD and morbidly obese, there's actually really only kind of two studies that I was able to find in the literature. And the first comes from Lee Swanstrom. Uh, he looked at six, really only six patients who underwent lapnis and compared to six who underwent gastric bypass. Uh, the mean BMI was uh, 39 in the lapnis group and 55 in the bypass. So I'm not sure we're really comparing apples to apples there. Um, he did find that there were significant decreases in, in reflux-related symptoms in both groups, as well as significant decreases in their Demeester score, and they were really equivalent. But again, it's not really clear if that's a, it's an equivalent patient population if you're doing BMI of 39 compared to BMI of 55. So the, the overall conclusion was that both were effective, but bypass was clearly better for their overall health as it had the, the weight loss as well as the resolution of GERD symptoms. Nin Win used the University Health System Consortium to look at uh, uh, the comparison of Nissen versus bypass, and he looked at things a little bit differently. So he didn't look at symptomatic control or GERD resolution, he looked at safety. And so he looked at, um, at the differences between a couple of uh, basic uh, safety and quality related outcomes between the two operations and found really no significant differences in length of stay, observed or risk adjusted mortality or hospital costs between a lap Nissen or a lap gastric bypass. But he did find that bypass was associated with lower rates of perforation or laceration, um, likely splenic or, or uh, liver related injuries, uh, but a higher rate of postoperative bleeding. So their conclusion was if the two are of equivalent risk and safety, we should probably be doing gastric bypass as this is likely, again, the better operation for their overall health and for the control of their reflux. And that's really almost it in terms of the literature that we see uh, for comparing those two operations directly. Now, uh, John Gould went on to survey all of us. Um, he surveyed about 550 randomly selected SAGES members, um, asked how many perform laparoscopic anti-reflux surgery, how many perform bariatric surgery, and how many perform both, and then went on to ask, what do we think is the right operation for these patients? Uh, and about 91% of us felt that gastric bypass was the best option, followed by another 6% who felt sleeve gastrectomy was the next best choice. And also asked if they would perform a fundoplication in exactly the patient I'm supposed to be talking about, those that refuse bariatric surgery. Refuse bariatric surgery. And he said, we found that about 35% of us would not. Um, and that's probably the right answer, but still 65% would. Um, so that's, that's still the majority of us who feel that they would still perform a traditional anti-reflux operation in a morbidly obese patient. And, and I, think, I, I think the bottom line in reviewing this literature is that it's still a reasonable thing in patients who, uh, who are unwilling to undergo a bariatric procedure. It's still a relatively safe operation. As we all know, it's definitely harder in morbidly obese patients, but it can still be done safely. Um, it is effective at controlling symptoms over the short term, but it has a longer and a higher rate of long-term failure. And so uh, I think as long as you appropriately counsel your patients that you feel strongly that bariatric surgery is likely their best option, um, but if they're unwilling to do it, this is still an option, albeit not a great one and one that's prone to failure over the long time. So, so I would say, Rather than saying no, I mean, I think we do operate on them, and I think it's okay to, but I think you have to be very selective, and I would I'd be very honest and upfront with your patients about their chances of long-term success. Um, when looking at, uh, at other surgical interventions for reflux, this is a very unstudied field. Um, so links uh, in the, in the, in the links, um, uh, handout or uh, their safety brochure, they talk about the safety and effectiveness is not established for BMI uh, greater than 35, so that basically excludes all of our bariatric surgical patients right there. Same with TIF patients. There is one study that looked at Streta and the endoluminal plicator for the treatment of GERD and morbidly obese patients, and it's only about 22 patients, 10 of whom underwent plication and 12 uh, underwent Streta. The failure rate was 28% in this patient population. 10% um, uh, of the plicator patients failed and about 42% of the Streta of patients failed, and 45% of all these patients ended back up on uh, PPI. So probably not really a great option to try and do much of anything endoluminally in the obese patient. So in summary, uh, I think bariatric surgery really is the best choice for, uh, for GERD symptoms in, in morbidly obese patients, and really specifically probably a gastric bypass. Um, traditional anti-reflux surgery may be performed, but has a higher rate of failure, and, and non-traditional or endoluminal options are really not well studied and probably not appropriate for this patient population.
Thank you.